In this video, we're going to use the offset function in Microsoft Excel to dynamically return a certain number of the most recent records from the end of a data set. So what you see here is a preview of what we're going to create today. To the left, I have a data set of daily sales for about the past month and maybe a week. Over here in the center, I have an input cell for how many records from the end of this data set I want to pull back. And then over here, I have the results area. So right now it's currently set to five records. So if I change this to 10, this area updates automatically. And the first example, I'm going to show how to set this up for newer versions of Excel like 2021 and newer with you know Office 365 subscribers. In the second half of this video I'm going to show everyone else how they can set this up dynamically for older versions of Excel. So before we begin I just want to show you a simple example of how the offset function works. So the first input is the reference. Think of that as the beginning point of where you want to start. There really is no right answer for this input. Now, since I have vertical data over here to the left, a good beginning point for me is the header. So I'm just going to go with A1. The number of rows we want to go down is the next input. Now you can also go up if you want. If you want to go up, you begin with a minus symbol in front of that row, the number of rows you want to go up. Here we're already on the first row, so we can't go up anymore. So we'll just go down two rows. So we have a positive two there. Next we have the number of columns we want to go to the right or left. Again, if you want to go to the left, you would input a minus and then the number. We want to go two to the right, so we'll input a two here. Then we have the height and width of the range that we want to pull back. If we want to pull back a single cell, that's just going to be one and one for both. And so this returns this value here. And if we go back to our starting point, we went two rows down and two columns across. So that makes sense. Easy enough. So like I said a second ago, we're going to begin with an example of an offset for viewers who have subscriptions to 365 or Excel 2021 and newer. So we're going to begin with our offset. The first input is our reference again. Again, we're going to start in cell A1. I'm going to lock that down by hitting F4. Then we have how many rows we want to go down. Well, we want something dynamic here because our goal is to pull back the last 10 records or whatever numbers here. So we're going to input the count A which counts anything that does not have a null or a blank. So I'm going to reference column A where the first column of our data set is. And what I'm going to do to get the last 10 records is subtract it from our day input cell. So I'm going to hit F4 to lock that down. So the number of columns we want to offset is going to be zero because I want to stay in the column that we're in. So then we have our height. Our height is going to be the same as the number of days we want to pull back. You know, we want 10 rows. So again, I'm going to reference that cell. And then the width, our data set has four columns, so we want to return four columns. So you can see this returns the last 10 records. If I add a new record, we'll just add August 5th, and I'll just put 
some really large amount so it's obvious you can see it updates automatically so this can handle new records that get added if we want to change this to any value at all we can and it's going to update automatically and that's the nice thing about these newer versions of Excel. They can handle multi-cell array outputs. The older versions can only produce a single cell at a time. So that's what we're going to look at next. So here we're going to add a helper column to the left of our results area called days. And it's just going to be a simple if statement. So we have our logical test we want to see if the output of the row function which that's just going to return whatever row we're on right now we're on row 3 so if that row minus 2 and the reason we want that is we want this to start at a count of 1 so if we're on row 3 right now it's going to return 3 minus 2 so that equals 1 so we want to start this at a value of 1 is less than or equal to the number of records we want to return at the end so we want to hit F4 or put dollar signs in front of the column and row reference to keep that fixed so if that is true then what we want to do is take this number of days in this cell and subtract it from the row function output which again returns three so really that's like a minus three and we want to add three to that because we really want to start this if this condition is met we want to start it at the highest value of five and that's what that's going to return if this is true so we have five minus minus three plus three so that produces five otherwise we just want to return nothing so what this does is it creates a count in reverse from our max value all the way down to one so now that we have this helper column we can insert the offset if I can type here so the first input is our reference our starting point so again I'm gonna choose a1 I'm gonna hit F4 to lock that down for the rows we want to offset we're gonna again use the count a we're gonna reference any one of our columns from our data set so I'm gonna hit F4 to lock that down and then we are going to subtract it from this cell here that contains the number of days or records we want to pull back so I'm gonna hit F4 three times to lock this column I want this column to stay fixed but I want the row to remain relative when we drag this down so now we have the number of columns we want to go over now here we need something dynamic and in order for this to work in our results area these headers have to be the same as the headers over here in the data set to the left because we're going to use the match function so the match function has a lookup value that's going to be our header here so I'm going to hit F4 two times to keep this row locked but the column relative when we drag this to the right it's going to move with our drag and then our lookup array is going to be this row of headers here so I'm going to hit F4 to lock that down completely because the match function finds the position of where this lookup value is found in this row of headers the third input is the type of match we want we want an exact match so this is going to return a position of one but we want to offset zero column wise because again remember this is our column offset so I'm gonna subtract one from this then we have the height we want to pull back we can only pull back a single cell at a time in older versions of Excel so we have a one and a one for both of those so that's gonna return five rows from the bottom 
Now, what we also need to do is nest this in the if error because we're going to drag this down here to have more possible outputs. So we don't want to turn errors on anything that does not have a days number in this column. So the first input is the thing we want to look at, which we've already created. That's the output of our offset. And then the value of error, we just want nothing. So two double quotes. So I'm going to drag this to the right. I'm going to fill without formatting because that would have made that all dates. And then I'm going to drag this down. And you can see, let me see how far this helper, OK. So it only produces results that have a match based on our days. So if I change this to 10, you can see it updates automatically. If I add a new record, it's going to update automatically as well. So we'll just do 50,000 here, 10,000 here. And you can see it's all there. Well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching.